kids, it's me again, Teacher Chris, and I will be your teacher for today. Hello kids, it's me again, Teacher Chris, and I will be your teacher for today. In English grade 4, using Matapad curriculum. Quarter 2, week 3, day 3 to 4. Our topic for today is all about using facial expressions and gestures in narrating story. So, are you ready to learn your lesson today? If yes, let's do it! Have you told a friend a story about a really fun day? Do you just use words? No, you might widen your eyes when describing something surprising or use your hands to show how big the playground was. These are examples of non-verbal cues, things like facial expressions and gestures that help make your story more interesting and clear to the listener. When we use non-verbal cues while telling a story, it's like giving the audience extra hints to understand how the characters feel and what's happening in the story. Let's explore how you can use these cues in storytelling to make your narration more exciting and emotional. So what are nonverbal cues? Nonverbal cues are the ways we communicate without using words. These include facial expressions, how your face shows emotions like smiling for happiness or frowning for sadness. Like this. Gestures. Movements of your hands or body like pointing, waving, or showing sides. Body language. How you stand, move, or react like crossing your arms or leaning forward. So, ito yan. Ito yung mga gestures and body language. Why are nonverbal cues important in storytelling? So, bakit ba kailangan yung mga gesture na yan or body language sa mga storytelling? When you tell a story, your audience doesn't just listen to your words. They also watch how you move and what expressions you use. Nonverbal cues are number one, make the story more engaging. When you use gestures and facial expression, your listeners are more interested in what you're saying. So kapag nag storytelling kasi tayo class, kapag nakikita ng mga nakikinig sa atin yung mga facial expression natin, o yung mga kilos natin, mas nakokot nila yung uh, mas nakokot natin yung attention nila para makinig sila sa, sa story natin. At syempre, the more na may facial expression ka at gestures ka, medyo nagigits nila kung ano ba yung nilalaman ng story mo. Help show emotion. Sometimes your face can show emotions better than words. For example, raising your eyebrows can show surprise. Make the story clearer. Gestures can help explain parts of the story. For example, using your hands to show how tall a character is helps the audience imagine it better. Ba, minsan tayo pa pinapa-explain tayo, oh, gano'n ba kalaki yung bag? Malaki ba yung bag? Alimbawa, alimbawa niregaluhan ka ng mama mo ng bag. Ma, gano'n kaya kalaki yung bag na ireregalo mo sa akin? So, gumagamit ka ng hand gesture. Pinapakita mo yung size gamit yung hand mo o yung kamay mo. How to use nonverbal cues while telling a story? First is use facial expressions to show emotions. Happy moments. Smile when something good happens in the story. 
For example, if a character finds a treasure, show excitement on your face. So kapag ikaw ay nag storytelling kapag masaya yung mood, kailangan nakasmile ka. Tapos kailangan excited ka. Papakita mo sa, sa nakikinig sa'yo na excited ka. Kasi happy moments yung pinapakita mo. Sad moments, frown or look down when describing something sad like a character losing something. So kapag sad moment naman yung kailangan mong i-portray or ipakita sa storytelling mo, dapat papakita mo talaga na malungkot ka. Number four, surprise moments. Widen your eyes or raise your eyebrows when something unexpected happens in the story. For example, if a character hears a loud noise, your face can show the shock. So alam niyo naman to, no? kapag alam niyo naman yung itsura ng no? surprise, na sorpresa. So dapat kapag kayo ay mag-storytelling at merong part doon na na-surprise so dapat makikita nung no? nakikinig sa inyo na na-surprise talaga kayo. Number two, use gestures to describe actions and objects. Show size or distance. Use your hands to show how big something is, how far characters had to travel. For example, if a character climbs a tall mountain, stretch your hand upward to show how high it is. Describe movements. When a character is running, you can use your arms to pretend like you're running in place. This makes the story feel more real. Use body language to show attitude. For example, confidence or fear. Stand tall if a character is feeling brave or shrink down if they're scared. For example, if a character faces a dragon, you can stand tall when the hero is ready to fight, but hunch your shoulders if they are nervous. So body language, so, alam niyo naman kung paano yung lang body language ng natatakot. Or alam niyo naman yung body language kapag kayo ay mag-apang o hindi kayo natakot. So dapat ganun yung papakita nyo kapag kayo ay nati storytelling So let's try to read aloud a story. It was a bright Saturday afternoon when Luis and his sister Mia decided to fly their new kite at the park. The wind was perfect and the colorful kite soared high in the sky. But suddenly, a strong gust of wind pulled the kite away from them. The string snapped and the kite flew off into the trees. Luis and Mia were worried they might lose it forever, but they decided to work together to get it back. They followed the kite's path and finally found it tangled in the tree. Luis tried to climb the tree, but it was too high. Mia, remembering what their dad thought them, suggested using a long stick to carefully free the kite. After a few tries, they managed to pull the kite out without damaging it. They were so happy to have their kite back and realized how working together made them successful. Alright, from the story, let's try to answer a short quiz. So you can get a grade for a pad paper to answer or to try to answer the following questions. Are you ready? Let's do it! Who are the main characters in the story? A. Luis and Mia B. Luis and his dad C. Mia and her mom Letter D. Mia and her friend Alright, the correct answer is letter E. Luis and Mia Number 2 where does the story take place? A. At school B. In the park Letter C. At home And letter D. On a beach Alright The correct answer is letter B. In the park Number 3 question What happened to the kite during the story? 
A. It gets stuck in the water. Letter B. It flew away and gets stuck in a tree. Letter C. It was lost forever. And letter D. It broke into pieces. So what is the correct answer? The correct answer is letter B. It flew away and gets stuck in a tree. Number 4. How did Luis and Mia try to retrieve the kite? A. They called their parents for help. B. Luis climbed the tree to get it. Letter C. They used a long stick to, the, to free the kite. And letter D. They waited for the wind to blow it down. So what is the correct answer? Correct answer is letter C. Number 5. What lesson did Luis and Mia learn in the story? Letter A. To never fly a kite again. Letter B. That working together can solve problems. Letter C. That it's better to play alone. And letter D. That kites are too fragile. Alright, the correct answer is letter B. That working together can solve problems. Number 6. What kind of day was it when they went to the park? Letter A. Rainy and cold. B. Sunny and windy. C. Cloudy and quiet. D. Hot and dry. Alright, the correct answer is sunny and windy. Number 7. Why couldn't Luis climb the tree? Letter A. It was too tall. B. He was scared. C. The tree was too slippery. And letter D. Her sister stopped him. The correct answer is letter A. It was too tall. Number 8. What did Mia remember that helped them solve the problem? A. How to fly the kite higher. B. How their dad taught them to use a long stick. C. How to ask for help from others. And letter D. How to make another kite. Alright, the correct answer is letter B. How their dad taught them to use a long stick. Number 9. What is the main event in the story? Letter A. Letter A Luis and Mia losing the kite. Letter B. Luis and Mia flying a kite for the first time. Letter C. Luis and Mia's family picnic. And letter D. Luis and Mia building a new kite. Alright. The correct answer is letter A. Luis and Mia losing the kite. And number 10. What is the overall message of the story? Letter A. Kites are too difficult to control. B. Working together helps solve problems. Letter C. Trees are dangerous. And letter D. Flying kites is not fun. Alright, the correct answer is letter B. Working together helps solve problems. Alright, did you get them all correct? If yes, congratulations! That's all for today. I hope you learned a lot on our today's lesson. Once again, I am Teacher Chris. See you tomorrow. Bye!